So you think about getting a tummy tuck? This video will tell you what I think is important to know about getting a tummy tuck. The first thing on the list, once you decide to get a tummy tuck, is to get your hair done. Yes, I did say get your hair done. Because that's the last thing you're going to want to do after you come out of surgery. Well, anyway, guys, let's get this video started. Hi, guys. Welcome back. This is your girl, Bonnie Baltimore. Today's video is going to be what I think you should know if you are going to get a tummy tuck. And if you have not subscribed to my channel, please do. Don't forget to press the notification button because I promise you I got much, much more to come. Well, let's get this video started. Having a tummy tuck is a major surgery. It takes weeks before you can actually stand up straight. Um, I think that most doctors tell you you can go back to work after week three, depending on where you work at. I suggest you take every bit of four weeks, maybe six, if you can have that time off. Just because your incision look like it's healed, your body is not healed on the inside. So you really have to take it easy. I will say that every doctor is different. My doctor, he was pretty basic. He had me do no scar treatment, not touch the belly button. Uh, bathe in HIPAA cleanse for at least two weeks afterwards. I used the HIPAA cleanse that I had until it was gone. No need to waste what I had. So I continued to bathe in the HIPAA cleanse until I had used it all. I didn't have any type of infections. Everything actually healed pretty well. I did take it nice and slow. So if you are getting ready to get a tummy tuck, make sure you have somebody that's there with you the first few days. If you can have someone with you a week, that'd be great. Um, you do need to move around, constantly move around. A friend of mine, she just had a tummy tuck and she ended up getting blood clots. She said it was worth it, but however though, you have to stay busy. You have to stay moving around. And it's weird because they take you to rest and you need to rest, but you also need to move around. At least get up, walk around the house. If you live in a neighborhood where you can safely walk on the street with your walker, do so. Get out, get some fresh air and try to stay active as well as getting rest. But as far as getting rest, that means don't do anything strenuous, like going cook and cleaning and you know, that extra stuff like that, picking up your children, picking up heavy things, heavy purses. I know what heavy purses are because I have heavy purses. None of that. You have compression socks, wear them. I had compression cuffs. I will try and show you that uh, up in the corner somewhere was given compression uh, cups when I had my uh, breast reduction because I was at a high risk uh, dealing with blood clots previously. So my doctor did prescribe those and my insurance did cover it. So I kept them when I had my tummy tuck. Doctor didn't offer them to me, but I guess he knew that I'd had them from the previous surgery and I definitely did pack those with me and I did use them for at least two weeks. Before you go out to have your surgery, guys, I can't stress. Don't just go out and buy a lot of items because a lot of this stuff you're not gonna need. Talk to your doctor, he'll tell you what's good for you, he'll tell you what you need. Um, these videos on YouTube, I've seen people buy so much stuff, even renting recliners, and I'm like, I am not gonna rent a recliner. I'm not gonna buy a recliner. To me, most comfortable thing for me was to actually lay on the sofa. I did sleep on the sofa. I also slept on my chair in ottoman. When I slept on my sofa, which is this sofa here, all I did was take my bed pillows and I pressed them against the back. And I laid like this. This is how I slept. And the reason why I would recommend the sofa is because definitely not your bed. Not for me anyway, I couldn't do a bed. But I recommend the sofa because one, it don't take much to get up. Once you take your leg and come down, your foot is on the floor. Uh, recliner, of course, you know, now they have the, um, I guess automatic recliner where you press the button and it automatically go up or down or whatever. But the sofa, if you feel like you need to move around, you have your leg where you can move it while on the sofa to move it and it doesn't take much and of course it's easy to move your other leg around so i definitely recommend the sofa not just that too versus your bed on the sofa there's no rolling you can't roll this way because you have backing and of course you can't roll this way because you're on the floor if you do so guys i definitely recommend laying 
on the couch, sleeping on the couch. Not just that too, but it, it don't take much to put a couple of pillows. It don't take much to put a couple of pillows under your legs on the couch so you can elevate your legs. I slept on the couch for at least six weeks. And I'm not gonna lie to you. After the six weeks was over with, my husband looking at me like, are you coming back to the bedroom? And I'm looking like, hmm. I actually enjoy sleeping on the sofa, nice and comfortable. All right, what else should you know? Okay, back to buying all those items. Um, people was buying caddies to put their items in. Uh, next to the sofa, usually you have a um, end table. Everything you need, sit it on the end table because while you're sitting on the sofa, if you have a side table, it's not much to move a pillow and reach for a drink, reach for the remote, reach for any type of vitamins, everything that you may need in hands reach, put it on a coffee table or an end table and have everything already set up before you actually go and have your surgery. Because once you got a surgery and get to your home, you're not gonna wanna look for things. So if you take vitamins daily, sit your vitamins on the side of the table so you have them available. If you uh, like to drink water or drink your drinks throughout the night, even throughout the day, just sit your drinks up here, cell phone, right here so make sure you have your um your extension cord so you can comfortably plug up your phone or your uh, tablet or whatever extension cord for your charger vitamins water snacks everything can fit on a end table no need to go buy any special whatever just take everything you need in advance before you leave so when you get home everything is right there baby wipes you know to wipe your hands if you eat a snack or something and even take a small trash can and sit it on the side so you have a small trash can so you don't have to get up every time that you um, eat something now of course um, you do need to be moving around but just random moments while you're sitting down and you're trying to relax everything you need is at hand I wore a skirt and a button top I think that's what I wore however if you have a one piece you got to pull it all the way up if you wear two pieces all you have to do is just pull the bottom top down so you can, all you do is pull down the bottom so you can get to your incision. Also, if you wear a, um, a two-piece, a bottom and top, you don't have to go and buy these items. I don't know what it's called. If I find it, I will post it in the corner. If I don't find it, I just don't find it. But people will find these things that they can put their, um, clip their um, little bulbs to. Um, guys, honestly, to me, once again, that's a waste of money. I had my bulbs, I, I would put them on the tip end, I would clip them here so it's close to my incision, and that was it. I just clipped them on the top, one on each side. I didn't buy no contraptions to hold them up or whatever else, and if I was going to uh, clean myself up or something, honestly, I would take those bulbs and I would pin them, one here on this side of my bra, and one here on this side of my bra, so it's higher up and it is out the way, so I can wipe myself down without the bulbs being in my way. Okay, what else? Um, cook before you have your surgery. Clean your house before you have your surgery. Meal prep is great. Um, it works. I did uh, meal prep. I made soups and broths and all that kind of stuff like that. So I was prepared for at least a week without having to really worry about what I'm going to eat, what I'm going to intake, which my doctor put me on a three-week um, broth diet. Did not survive. But anyway, prepare is very important because once you get back to your home, you're not going to want to deal with any of that. If you can get a walker, get a walker. If you can get a walking stick, get a walking stick. I, I suggest maybe going to your local thrift store, Goodwill, ask your mom, your uncle, cousin, auntie, grandma, whoever, that may have a walker that they can let you use for a few weeks. Uh, after that, you're not gonna need it. So I feel like it's a waste of money going buy a brand new one. I got my walker from my mother and it was brand new. She had never used it. I have not been big on scar treatment. I start real good, then I get lax, then I get lazy, life happens, and I forget about it, I'm rushing. So I technically have not been doing much of scar treatment. I will definitely put a video out at nine months and put a video out at my 12 month, which is one year, to see what the difference is with my scars. If I do scar treatment, I will let you guys know what I'm using, which is in my previous video. I still have the same stuff, so no need to buy anything new unless I get a good recommendation on something that I will. 
so I'll be able to uh, come back with you all in the future and compare what my scars look like from the beginning up until the end one lady asked me about one lady messaged me in my previous video about having to uh, pay for the I guess the safe house or whatever it is or those homes that they take you in for a week and take care of you and everything else I feel like if you are flying at um, if you're flying outside of your area and you're gonna be in that area that's okay maybe you need that if you are going to be going home there's no need for it and even if you don't go home if you choosing to rent a hotel or stay with somebody I really feel like you don't need that but of course everybody does not heal the same way everybody does not have that smooth sailing uh, some people do have medical issues that occur after they didn't have the tummy tuck. I thank God I didn't have any issues after uh, my tummy tuck. Everything has been smooth, no openings or incisions or anything. But I feel like it may be a waste of money for some people. It would have been a waste of money for me because I had my mom that stayed with me throughout the week. Uh, my husband, he came home at night. My mom, she uh, made sure that I had everything I needed, which really wasn't a whole lot because I'd already prepped and prepared before. So to get up, to go to the kitchen, to get a bowl of soup or whatever, that was easy. All I had to do was walk, refrigerator, microwave it, and that's it. Uh, as far as emptying your little bulbs, my mom did it for me for the first few days. Honestly, I really could have done it myself. It was nothing for me to unscrew it and, and squeeze it out and fill up the cup and measure it and write it down because the doctor will have, he will have you measure the fluid daily. I could have done that myself. It wasn't that hard, but once again, my mom was here. She wanted to do it. I let her do it. If you have little children, which I did, I had a one-year-old. Matter of fact, she wasn't even one. Yeah, was she one? She had just turned one. So I had a one-year-old. I had a four-year-old at the house all over the place but once again I did not pick them up my mom she had them uh, I had family members that would take them because with them being home they wanted to sit on my lap they wouldn't pick them up so my babies they were out the house most of the time for my first couple of weeks so I didn't have to worry about them coming to sit on me and I'm pushing them away and they're crying because they want me to pick them up so they were gone for the first couple of weeks in and out I see them and then they go again how do I feel? Do I have any regrets? No, no regrets at all. I promise you guys, my tummy tuck is not perfect. I thought my results would have been better than what they are, but I'm satisfied. I am okay. If the doctor could do more, he will. And if I choose not to, or if he choose not to, then I'm okay with that because my results is way better than what it was before. Eventually, I will show y'all the beginning with the one year. So when you do go to have your tummy tuck, guys, just go in thinking that it's going to be better than what it was before, but that you may not come out looking like a supermodel. Put it that way. Put it that way. Now, if you're paying thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars, like 10000 11000 12000 man, your doctor better have you looking like um, Beyonce or something. You know what I'm saying? Because that's a lot of money. I didn't pay that, that. And what did I pay? My consultation with my discount. Uh, it was with the discount, the promotion it had going on. It was seven thousand with muscle repair, and it was ten thousand with muscle repair and liposuction. My doctor told me that I did not need liposuction, so I chose not to do the liposuction. Do I regret that? I really don't know. I don't know, but I am okay with my uh with my back maybe if i lose a little weight maybe it'll look a little better but yeah it was seven thousand was the price that i was quoted for the uh tummy tuck muscle repair ten thousand with tummy tuck muscle repair and lipo i did do the muscle repair no lipo somewhere somehow my doctor managed to get it covered on my insurance once it was covered on my insurance the 3000 or 3400 3700 something like that that price right there that i owed the hospital for anesthesia and every all that extra stuff once my insurance picked it up those prices will drop so i actually paid 3250 for my tummy tuck and i was very very much grateful for that how he got my insurance to cover it guys i don't know but i do know that if you have a hernia any hernia repair. I know that if you have had excess uh, skin, 
from weight loss that right there I did have 10 pregnancies I did carry uh, six babies full term and um, I know that maybe that has something to do with him getting me approved as well and uh, as far as approval on insurance uh, when I went to try and get my breast reduction I was denied a few times uh, my doctor they told me we're not giving up we're gonna keep working on it and I'm gonna say roughly five months later I get a call telling me they have good news they finally got approved guys there's different tricks that you can do to get them to cover things on your insurance I do not know the tricks I don't I've been told what make it rashes I don't know I don't know the tricks of getting things covered on insurance to get a tummy tuck approved as well as a reduction you have to have a doctor who know how to write you have to have a doctor who knows how to write if your doctor know how to write they know the right words to use they can get approved if your insurance have it where you can get approved so yes find a doctor who know how to write if you've been trying to get a breast reduction or a tummy tuck on your insurance and a doctor you talk to said me we can't do this just know there are some doctors out there who can get it approved on your insurance they just have to know the right words to use and how to put it together and they can get it approved so i try to keep my videos at a minimum because my attention span is like kind of short i will get up and start cleaning doing a video and i'm looking like hmm let me rewind this video because i think i missed something so let me uh end this video well anyway guys if you have any questions or whatever just let me know leave me a message and i promise you i will get back with you all and i am excited about what's to come well anyway guys you all be blessed enjoy your day Bye.